A multiplicity of perspectives, instead of being a pious act of let's be interdisciplinary today, it comes out of the very guts of what you're talking about. And until issues come from the center, and interdisciplinarity isn't an add-on and a piety, until it's, it's unthinkable in any other way, we're not going to have an education the way we need it. And so you embody what I think is one of the most powerful insights into what we need to be thinking about in education. But I wonder if you're not talking about the graduate experience more than the undergraduate experience when you worry about yeah. this atomization and increased specialization. Yeah. And isn't the great value of a liberal education in the undergraduate setting that you can't be a physics major and not learn about his history and literature and language? And <laughs> oh, but you can. I wish that liberal education, which everybody raises that flag, as you know, including President Obama, before he then immediately says, but of course the important thing is economic competitiveness. But liberal education doesn't exist in this country. Liberal education is not mixing up for the first year or so of your education a bundle of courses that are not in one discipline. And then, when you're getting really serious, you spend the last two years in physics, if you're in physics, progressively going like this. So what's the message? The message is, at the level of kind of general stuff, in the beginning of an education, it's a good idea for you to do a few other things besides this one thing. But what's the central message and how is the institution organized? By departments, the central message is what's your major, and there is no structure within the academy that is looking at the totality of a student's experience. Are the, we... the departmental structure means you exist when you declare that you are a major in whatever. So to me, the tragedy is, the, the, what you're talking about is enormously important. But bits and pieces of a few disciplines, and then seriousness being the trajectory of abandoning everything except one, which is what it means to declare a major, isn't a liberal education. In a sense, are we educating people to become academics when virtually Precisely. none of them will? Precisely. Okay. The only model I know of that exists in the academy is to make little versions of ourselves. There is no other that I know of. And the only trajectory that's rational is to continue to become more and more a version of one's faculty. Uh, OK. There's a question over there. Yeah, I just wanted to say I feel like an Eskimo at a conference about snow. Um, in the sense that, okay, so there's this education thing which is about producing young people who are engaged in the world, who have certain human qualities that will lead to fabulous evolution of the society we live in together that in, in terms of what they care about, in terms of what they can um, be engaged with deeply. And then there's education that I am, I, I, follow, I wrote down this four part, um, I want to move from certified nurse's assistant to LPN. No, it seems to me we need two different words. I really don't think it is. I think that when you start with the human being, and that human being is a low-wage worker in this country who has no access to education, and given an opportunity, Tara talked about the different ways in which you could find access, and in my view, the union who has a relationship with that worker can help them fill out that uh, you know, uh, computer uh, program to be able to find an educational institution that will treat them as a human being, give them skills, add to their abilities in terms of problem solving and teamwork and the variety of things you need, um, is, not, uh, is not two separate um, categories of education. In fact, all too often that low wage worker isn't thought of when you start out as a human being who should, in this country, be able to get the kind of education that Liz talks about. Let me just add to that. It isn't such a great accomplishment to have spent two and a half years of your life taking anthropology courses, although we consider it one. It has virtually, by the way, nothing to do, in all likelihood, with what you're going to do with the rest of your life except marginally. 
So we live in a world made up of things that we believe, and that's always very dangerous. We live in this world of assumptions that somehow if you go to Bennington or Princeton or Yale or what, any of these fancy institutions and do what, go through that sequence, that you are somehow well-educated and an elite in all kinds of, in many, many levels. And it's just not true. That you have more, that you have more money, more connections, more social clout, and that you're going to be more successful in the society, no question. But that isn't because of the education. That's the point. The education itself is virtually irrelevant. In this conversation about going to college, making the difference, I fear we're talking about the ice in the glass and not the liquor as what's causing us to get drunk. If you read the studies that the New York Times did, the critical variable is not going to college. The critical variable is if you started with more, you end with more, and if you start with less, you end with less. If you have more money to do it, you will succeed more, and if your parents went to college, you will succeed more. What isn't happening and has to happen is that what happens inside that institution transforms your possibilities independent of the conditions with which you start. And until we get to that, the great challenge that, that the city of Chicago is going after is going to not meet its deepest hopes and dreams, which is to make it irrelevant whether you start with $10 or five and parents who went to college or not. It, it strikes me also um, that the, the, the previous comment assumes that you only can construct a, a course or a learning experience around one theme. If, in fact, at Monterey Bay, where I once was, we found with 18 and 19 year old first college, first generation students, if we wanted to talk about American history, and we started with their history, and in, they interviewed their parents, and they, and they and asked their parents what it was like back in the day, then they began to understand history from their own life, and then we could build out from that. So it strikes me that both intellectually and pedagogically, there are ways to do more than train phlebotomists if, in fact, we set our minds to it. We could also engage people not only in the woof of the skill or the knowledge they need, we think they need to develop, but the warp of how the me in here connects to the it out there and what are the ethical and other issues. The way we think about curriculum is so one-dimensional in most cases that we back ourselves into this absolutely uh, bizarre, to use a well-chosen word earlier, situation pedagogically. Yeah, so Gina wants to make one comment. We're gonna wrap, but there's the entire curriculum working group for you guys to have um, an aggressive dialogue about this. I just want to make one quick comment, which is uh, I worked on a project around campus diversity learning, and I know there are many institutions which look at all the aspects of nursing through both sociological and anthropo anthropological lenses, which is actually incredibly important if you're going to be a professional and you're going to uh, be able to deal with the emerging uh, demographics of this country. So, I don't think that these are two different things that we're talking about. Secondly, I'd just like to say if anyone has any curiosity, interest, uh, ideas about the idea I have projected, which is only an idea, I will be here the entire time. And I, uh, I, you know, I'm a doer more than a thinker. And if something could come out of this that moves us forward, uh, it would uh, give me great pleasure. <laughs> Uh, the single greatest tragedy to me in what's happened to education in the last centuries is the severing of thinking and doing. It is a huge tragedy and it impoverishes both. Thought without action is devastating to me um, in terms of what it allows you to think matters. Uh, and action without thought is even worse. So. One of the things that this room really understands is the inseparability of those two things. What I hope you leave with is the inseparability if education is going to have the power that it needs to have. And not to think of yourselves as non-academic because you think thinking 
is powerfully related to action or action requires thought. That is the quintessence of what it means to be serious uh, to me in an academic sense. So don't think you're kind of not like the rest of, you know, you're kind of an amateur. No, you're not. You're a professional about this business, and I hope you, you act that way. Thank you.